Imagine going to the doctor and finding out you're literally allergic to yourself. Your immune system is supposed to keep you healthy, protect you, make life easier. But in some people, it actually has a full on allergic meltdown in response to their own hormones. Let's talk about five ways that some people's immune systems are doing way too much in response to their hormones. The first one is catamenial anaphylaxis in response to estrogen or progesterone. So catamenial is a word that we use to describe something that happens in response to the menstrual cycle at kind of a cyclic fashion. And anaphylaxis is a severe and life-threatening allergic response to something and oftentimes something that should be generally harmless, like your own hormones in your own body. So these people actually experience cyclic anaphylaxis, that life-threatening threatening allergic reaction where your throat swells and you have trouble breathing and you need an EpiPen or epinephrine to treat it and keep yourself alive. And they experience this with no obvious external trigger only at certain points in their menstrual cycle. It's extremely rare and it can be related to exogenous hormones as well. Exogenous means something that you're getting from the environment. So hormonal contraceptive pills or patches or creams or whatever that kind of delivery can cause this. But in some people, endogenous or the body's hormones that it's making itself, exposure can actually lead to these recurrent life-threatening allergic reactions. Interestingly, people can just start having these symptoms after years of being fine. Most of the time it doesn't happen like that, but it can. And there seems to be some relationship to most people who develop it kind of later in life have some inciting event, exposure to some kind of exogenous hormone. And then even when that's taken away, they continue to have it cyclically in response to their own hormones. There are case reports of it occurring for the first time in response to pregnancy. And then from then on out having kind of the cyclic response again. And frustratingly for a lot of these people, it takes a long time to get a diagnosis because they may not realize that what's happening is a cyclic response. And they spend a lot of time trying to find the external trigger in their life that is causing the reaction. It can be diagnosed with skin testing. So basically injecting progesterone or estrogen and seeing if you have a reaction, just the same way you would do any kind of allergy testing. And interestingly, or sadly, there's actually case reports of people who had such severe and unrelenting symptoms that they ended up having to have their ovaries taken out, for example, because their life was regularly in danger. But it's rare in general, and it's very rare for it to be that severe. And interesting and fairly odd kind of related entity is lactation associated anaphylaxis or hypersensitivity. And this is kind of like the same symptoms of severe allergic reactions, hives, trouble breathing, things like this, but only during lactation. And it's probably got similar mechanisms, but we don't know why some people experience it and other people don't. The reason that this happens and how it happens is really not fully understood, but we know that estrogen and progesterone both have a role in cell stabilization and both can likely enhance a cell's ability to release histamine, which is a big player in allergic reactions. In fact, estrogen levels have pretty strong associations to severity of allergic reactions in people who are prone to having significant allergic reactions. But the entity kind of is very broad and has a lot of things at play. So there's probably other environmental and hormonal factors that go into it. I just find it really fascinating that somebody could have this for a long time and be just pulling their hair out trying to figure out what their trigger is only to eventually find out or not find out that it's their own hormones going up and down during their cycle that is causing all of this chaos. The next one is autoimmune progesterone dermatitis or APD. This is a rare cyclic reaction to progesterone that happens in the second half of the menstrual cycle. So ovulation happens and then that's the luteal phase. In the luteal phase, as you can see up here, the levels of progesterone are quite a bit higher. And these people experience cyclic rashes, hives, urticaria, significant itching during that part of their menstrual cycle. So it's usually like for three or four days before their period comes and then for three or four days after, and then it goes away 
only to come again when they get back to that point in their cycle. These people have generally been on some sort of progesterone at some point in their life, either a contraceptive pill or fertility medications. And that is thought to be maybe like a inciting event. And then they start having these reactions, not dissimilar to what we were just talking about. But there are as well in this entity case reports of people who have never experienced it and then they get pregnant and now they experience it always moving forward. So it's probably kind of a sensitization response to either exogenous like oral birth control pills and then your body's sensitized and now it happens all the time or to pregnancy, really high progesterone levels, now your body's sensitized and it happens all the time again. Very frustrating and another one that can sometimes be very difficult for people to diagnose because if you're just breaking out in hives every few weeks, you probably are first going to think, this has to be something in my environment. You don't first go, oh, this is you know related to my own hormones. So yeah, you're basically in an immune response where your body treats your own hormone like it's an invader and reacts accordingly. And and the treatment can be antihistamines or steroids or anything that you would use to treat other significant allergic responses. But again, can be very frustrating, difficult to diagnose, and also frustrating to treat for the people who experience it. Next up is menstrual migraines. This is another fascinating entity where people have significant migraines that occur right at this drop. So where you see progesterone and estrogen plummeting. So right before your period comes at the end of that luteal phase, those levels drop. People get severe migraines. They can be one-sided migraines. They can be whole head migraines. Some people's are associated with dizziness and light sensitivity, just like you would experience any other migraine, but they occur only at that time, just before your period. And in the first few days of your period. Estrogen can interact with pain perception and the trigeminal nerve. And also the estrogen and progesterone dropping can make the blood vessels a bit more sensitive to fluctuations, which can trigger migraines in some people. There's a few options for treatment. Interestingly, you've probably heard me talk about in other videos how if you have migraines, especially migraines with aura, that you probably shouldn't be on an estrogen containing birth control pill. That's a distinct entity from menstrual migraines, which tend to be more associated with that drop in estrogen. So actually oral contraceptive pills with estrogen can be a very effective treatment for menstrual specific migraines. There are also other migraine treatments that can be effective as well. If you're now questioning, if you might also be allergic to yourself and had no idea, me too. Sorry, I, I don't mean to make you hypochondriac. These are all fairly unusual and rare, but subscribe if you are finding them interesting or learning something because I don't know, we'd love to have you around. Next one is cyclic vulvovaginitis. So cyclic, same as like what we've been talking about related to the menstrual cycle and vulvovaginitis is inflammation and or infections of the vulva and vagina. These people get recurrent and intense vaginal burning, itching, abnormal discharge, just general discomfort, swelling, redness of the vulva and vagina in a cyclic fashion, generally again, just before they have their period or just in the first few days of their period. Their symptoms generally are worsened by intercourse. And we do actually know a little bit more about what probably causes this one than the other ones in the video that we've been talking about. These hormonal shifts that we've been discussing this whole video actually alter the pH and microbiome of the vagina just slightly and also temporarily. But some people seem to be way more sensitive to those fluctuations in the microbiome and pH of the vagina, and that leads to them having these symptoms. Those changes also make yeast infections more common, and so some percentage of people who get cyclic vulvovaginitis, it won't be an infective source, but in some of them, it is actually yeast infections that are occurring only specifically at the end of that cycle and during menstruation. It can be really difficult to diagnose, and the treatment is kind of the same as most things that are related to that drop in hormones, and that's continuous contraceptive pills, or if it's related to the microbiome specifically, sometimes taking probiotics or doing things that support healthy vaginal flora can be helpful. It varies based on what the actual entity is, but this is another one, very hard to diagnose and oftentimes goes underreported and underdiagnosed. The next one is really fascinating to me and this is menstrual asthma. Interestingly, this is quite 
common. And this is where people who have asthma experience significantly more exacerbations just prior to their period starting. You basically get a hormone induced inflammation that makes the lungs and airways more reactive. And that leads to a higher number of asthma exacerbations in these specific times where your hormones are fluctuating. There's a real complex interplay of hormones and how they affect the respiratory system's function. Estrogen and progesterone both affect airway inflammation and the receptors in the airways affect reactivity to outside stimuli and anything that someone has as an asthma trigger just may be more triggering at certain times in their hormonal cycle. This one comes kind of on a spectrum. So more commonly, it's going to be that exacerbation when those levels drop off but there's kind of a happy medium for healthy respiratory function and hormone levels. And that significant drop off can mean more exacerbations, but also really high levels of either can be more exacerbations. And this is likely why people get more asthma exacerbations during pregnancy as well, one reason that they do. Basically those hormone changes just kind of create an environment where exacerbations can occur more easily. This is actually really common. About 40% of people who have asthma will experience way more exacerbations at certain points in their cycle. And I didn't actually know it was that common until I was doing the research for this video. I have severe asthma and I've never really taken note as to if it's worse at certain points in my menstrual cycle. The treatment is really just identifying that it's happening and altering whatever is being used to treat the asthma, changing dosing or frequency at times where they're more likely to experience exacerbation. But again, that is the tricky part of this is that it is often underdiagnosed because people aren't quite realizing and putting together that the symptoms are worse, which means as healthcare providers, we need to be asking people about it. So to recap, you can be alerted to peanuts, pollen, and apparently even yourself. If your body has ever betrayed you in some really frustrating way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you. I'll see you next Monday.